100 grams of protein is also massive. Like that's the equivalent of probably seven or eight chicken breasts per day for me. Maybe even a little bit more. Um, that's why again I, I go to protein powder sometimes because it's not always realistic to actually get that much chicken in. So they're the first two levels. You've got your uh, calorie level, your calorie intake, and your macronutrient ratio. So the amount of food you eat and the types of food you eat to make that up. Does that make sense? Cool. Uh, any questions so far before we move on? Would you be having the two chicken breasts for the two chicken breasts? Yeah, I'm, I'm doing, I'm going to repeat the question. Because, <laughs> microphone. Um, <laughs> yeah, so the question was, would I have two chicken breasts at every meal? If someone asks a question, I forget that, remind me, okay? Um, <laughs> Because again, it, there's no point in me answering a question when nobody knows what's going on in the video. Um, so yeah, would I have two chicken breasts at every meal? Absolutely. Um, I've chosen to set my meals up the same every single meal for two or three days in a row, just because when I cook it, it's easier. Like it's easier to cook six or seven of the same meals than have to worry about, you know, do I get protein, eggs, bacon here, and then whatever. Like I wake up in the morning, I go to the fridge, I take a bag out, I pour it into a lunchbox and heat it up. And that's it done. It's so easy to do. Um, I prepped like three days of meals yesterday in about an hour. And again, that's going to be something we talk about in a second. So, every meal, again, what you're looking for is protein, carbs, veg, and fat. Literally, like, I'm going to stand in front of you from now on anytime anyone asks a nutrition question and do this. <laughs> That's, honestly, I, look, do you know what the real kicker is? I spent freaking thousands of euros and hundreds of hours of education to discover that. Like, it's really unfancy, there's nothing sexy about it, it's not cool. But medicine so far has failed to do two things. It's failed to find a way to beat exercise when it comes to improving body composition. It's failed to find a way to beat good nutrition when it comes to sustaining health. Okay, there's two things it can't do because they're the two things we're meant to do and they're the two things we've always done. And we've always kind of eaten that way and now in the last 50 to 100 years we've said, hey, let's change everything and then all of a sudden you end up fucked up. A freaking a zoo in America managed to give its pandas um, diabetes. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't exist. That's not a thing in, um, in pandas. But they said, right, you know, we're the freaking, we're, we're the genius vets in this, um, whatever the university was attached to the school. We're going we're gonna to make it better. We're going to give these our manufactured foods and all of a sudden their bodies just shit themselves. They turned them back to normal food and they went back to eating properly and the diabetes disappeared. Um, type 2 diabetes is like, it's not a uniquely 20th century thing, but it's something that's become much more prevalent the more wealthy we've gotten, the more... Um, the more, the more access to, to processed food we've had. And the thing with it is, like, it's manageable and you can kind of get to the stage where if you're a type 2 diabetic, overcome a lot of the ill effects of it just by changing your food back towards like normal real food. So you don't have to worry about, you know, taking insulin shots every day. If you're type 1, that's a different story. So we've had calories, we've had macronutrients. The next thing is meal timing. So one of the things that always comes up is, if I eat more meals, my metabolism will be faster, therefore I'll lose weight quicker. Everyone's heard it? Yeah? Yeah, it's all wrong. Okay, it's not true. Um, there's one main reason why eating frequently works. If you ate breakfast at nine o'clock, and you waited until half seven or eight to have your dinner, what would happen? You'd be, well, let's say, let's say you somehow managed to avoid snacking, like you clamped your mouth shut. You'd be freaking starving. Like you get to half seven or eight o'clock and you just shovel food back into your mouth. You just be horsing it in. Problem with that is though, you overconsume. It takes, you know, 15 to 20 minutes for your stomach to go to your brain and say, hey, I'm full. And in that time period, you'll just keep eating and eating and eating. And when you do that, you get up from the table and you walk away like extremely uncomfortable. If anyone's ever overeaten, you'll know how, how much a bad or how, how big a bad meal will affect you. So the real reason why more frequent meals works in the real world is because you're less likely to overconsume. There's no metabolic benefit, it doesn't make your metabolism operate any faster. It just means you're less likely to eat more food, so you're more likely to stick to your diet. The net result then of sticking to your diet is you end up achieving the results your diet is set up to help you achieve. 
But if you give a scientist two groups and you say, hey, look, here's your control, here's your, here's your test group, and the test group does better off in more frequent meetings,